I have my homemade bandsaw for more than five years now and I still really like it. It's an awesome machine. But it also still has a few issues that I basically never show in the videos. One of these issues I want to fix in this video and what it is, well, just listen. Yeah, every time I turn it on, the belt slips horribly and yeah, that's not really good. Let's have a closer look. Well, the first thing I could look at would be the belt tension and oh, yeah, that could be a little tighter. But believe me, also when I first installed it and the belt tension was correct, it also slipped. So check this out. Quite the amazing thing is that here the motor pulley and the wheel pulley are both homemade out of plywood and they still work just fine. I could not just retension the belt and live with that slipping and use it as is because that worked fine for the last five years. But I really want to fix the issue for real this time. The problem is actually the motor because it's a three phase, two horsepower motor that has a really high starting torque. And it's not the first time that I've mentioned this problem and I've already got the comments why don't I just use a star delta switch to fix that. But the motor is already wired up in star and runs like this all the time. So would a star delta switch actually help? I don't know. If anybody of you knows, please let me know in the comments. But what I now want to do to fix this is to use this variable frequency drive and this then also allows me to control the speed of the saw with this dial on this new switch box that I've already made. And then I can also cut metals with this saw. And another upgrade is to replace the current V-belt with a poly V-belt like the one I've installed on my jointer planer combination. Now first of all I have to take the saw a little bit apart to get access to the motor. While taking apart the saw, it's also a good opportunity to clean it. I think it's also time to rotate this cleaning brush a little bit. It always cleans a little bit of the dust off of the tire. I also get asked from time to time how my MD of Banzo wheels are holding up and they are in a great shape. And since there are three coats of lacquer on it, I don't really have issues with moisture. The rubber is in a very good shape, there are no damages. It's just a bicycle inner tube strapped around there. And the bearings, if I listen to them, sound just fine. With the camera shotgun mic pointing directly at the bearings, you can also listen by yourself. Interesting here at the shaft is that it developed a little bit of play in this block of hardwood. But it shouldn't matter because when the blade is tensioned it's always pulled upwards and yeah this should have no effect. Huh. How did I attach this pulley? Now remember that every time I need to work on the motor on this saw I have to remove this support piece. Problem is the finish always sticks together so well and it also could be that there is a screw between this part here and the base. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, this is my 
sawdust drawer, which I don't really use. I always have the dust collection running and this actually doesn't really help me. But there is no screw down there. I'm not such a fan of the passive dust collection. It works, but yeah, hooked up to a dust collector, it's much, much better. It was just stuck together with the finish. I think if I remember correctly, the way this pulley is mounted to the shaft of the motor is quite interesting. And it doesn't come loose. <laughs> ah, no, that was another motor. <laughs> but yeah, there's a slot in the pulley and we drilled a hole through this shaft and just cut off a bolt with the threads and put that in there. And that drove the band so the whole time. I mean, it works great, but it's quite a large hole through that shaft. That poor, poor shaft. Not such a great idea drilling right through it. But well, it works in this case. But then again, I made this about four years ago, this motor upgrade to the saw. And over the years, I developed a few more skills and more experience. And I now also know more about what works and what doesn't really work. Just a little bit of development over the years. Also, I got this motor from some industrial machine that was thrown away and I was able to save that motor. So I got this for free. And it was in a absolutely perfect condition when I got it. Absolutely flawless. And that's also how it performed over the years on this saw. And here you can see how it's wired up in star. All the time this bandsaw was driven by four drywall screws. What's also interesting is that both pulleys were cut from the same piece. I was really trying to save material at that time. But if you look at the pulleys, they are in a good shape. Nothing seems to split or to crack. And the belt still has relatively good traction. But another thing I noticed, this bearing is um, completely garbage. There is nothing but resistance in it. And you can also hear that quite good. I definitely need to replace that, but that won't be fun. This was never intended to be replaced. It might work with some M6 bolts because the head can kind of hook inside and then I can pull it out with a nut from above. I've now made a few pieces to pull the bearing. First this here where I can pull the bearing into, then the three bolts that will hook inside the inner bearing race. And with this piece, I will keep them in place and prevent them from slipping inside and lose contact. So this will be a little tricky. Like that. Oops. Then a second one of them for the top. Okay, I've got that kind of secured with a rubber band. Now comes this piece. And then another piece with a smaller hole where that fits through. And I can add a washer and a nut to every one. Now they're all starting to get tight and I can go around and start pulling on every one and slowly pull out the bearing. Only problem, I can't see my progress and I don't know if it actually works. It should. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like it's coming out. It 
It worked. Now I just need to order a new bearing and hopefully that didn't damage that hole and it's fit to the bearing. So I can just install it, press it in and be done. While I'm waiting for the new bearing, I can't really continue with the rest, but I'm really curious about why and how this bearing failed. I have two theories. The first being that it was really a mechanical failure of the bearing because this was the side where the pulley was attached and that means that only this bearing not only had to take the load from the bands or blade tension, but then also the tension from the belt plus also the torque from the motor that puts even more tension on the belt and then the bearing. My second thought is that it was a failure of the rubber seals because they just rub against the inner race and that's how the seal works. And if that fails, dust will accumulate inside and gum up with the grease and that gets worse over time. Or it's a combination of both and I'm really curious, so let's open it. I really hope that it's not a dust issue because that means I should also change out all the other bearings. Well, this doesn't tell me all that much. There definitely is some dust in there, but I first have to wash it and if it then still doesn't work, it's really broken. And then if it works again, it was just a dust issue. Hmm, now it turns again easily and I can't feel any big damages. So it probably was a dust issue. But that's rather unfortunate because that means that the other bearings could be in the same condition but you just don't feel resistance yet. So I should change out all the bearings, at least for the lower wheel, because that's where all the dust is. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I ordered some bearings and also better ones than last time. If I listen to the new bearing, I can really hear how the rubber seals are rubbing against the inner race. And if I listen to the old bearing, I can't really hear that anymore, which means the seals are worn down and not functioning properly anymore. I don't know how well the mic can pick this up, but listen carefully, this is the old bearing. And this is the new bearing. To install it without damage, I think I can use the old bearing on top and a few clamps. For the most part though, I only used a single clamp because the bearing on top just kept slipping. I think this is all the way in. Let's see how well it fits on the shaft. Yeah, great. Now checking how true it runs by looking at this gap. And that also still looks very good. And to check the wobble, you have to look at this inner edge of the wood here because that's where I turned the channel when I made the wheels. The outer edge won't be true. And that also looks pretty good. That means changing the bearing didn't make anything worse, which is good. So now we'll change the other bearing and well, it's the same, so I won't show that. All right, now I have new bearings in the lower wheel and since the bearings are only seven euros a piece, I ordered four of them that makes it more worth the shipping cost and also replaced them in the top wheel. Didn't take long, about half an hour. With the bearings now done, I can start working on what I actually want to do and I'm starting with making a new pulley for the drive wheel. Since I want to 3D print a pulley, I first had to make the 3D model of it and I made it a bit oversized so I can turn the final shape on the lathe. And I also printed a jig to hold the pulley on the lathe. Now at the lathe we already have a shaft that we used for a different task. It has a turn part, threads at the end and also a centered hole for a live center. I printed the inner hole of the turning jig to be a fit with the shaft and on there I can clamp it with a washer and a nut. 
Now I can turn down this diameter and this face of the jig and later mount the pulley on there where the pulley then should run pretty true and round and then I can turn down the pulley and create its shape. Shavings from 3D prints are kind of interesting. Okay, now the jig diameter should be just right so that this fits on there perfectly. And that's the case. Now comes turning through this face here. As you can see, I also made a shallow relief cut. Now the smooth side of the print, the one that was on the print bed, can lay flat against the face I just turned and therefore now run true. And to mount that on there, I printed some spaces for nuts into the jig. On this side, I have a bolt with a big washer that rests against the rim of the pulley and on this part. The jig is slightly thinner than the pulley and that's so the washer properly can clamp the pulley to the jig and this little part I printed onto the jig just prevents the washer from being tilted too much. And now I can see how true it runs. That looks pretty good. For the pulley size I now want to make the diameter is 178.5 but I can't measure that with normal calibers and I don't have big ones. So I'm instead using this kind of depth gauge where I'm measuring from the outer diameter to this shaft. And that measurement then has to be 79.25 millimeters. And I'm not quite there yet, of course, because I've printed this a little oversized. I made the pulley out of PETG and that stuff turns so much better than PLA. Also the surface finish on PETG is just nice. The outer diameter is now correct and I've already installed the second tool which is a pointy 40 degree tool which I also already zeroed out for the first groove and I'm going to cut the groove by plunging into the pulley about 2.6 millimeters radially. That measurement I got from a table of making such pulleys. And the solid material I have left on the raw piece, which I printed as solid layers, is about four millimeters still, which should be enough. Well, the first groove didn't go as planned. I got a little bit of deflection in this direction, so Either my construction here is not stiff enough, my tool is not sharp enough, or it's something else. I now also changed the belt so I have more torque in the lower speeds. And I now just go on and see if I can still get a usable result. The grooves need to be exactly 2.34 millimeters apart, which I'm setting up now. And now I just re-zero this here and set 2.34 millimeters again for the next groove. That's not really good how I do that, but for this case it's accurate enough. Cutting the other grooves now worked better, but the fit of the belt is not that great. The left and right edge touch first. And it also looks like I cut the grooves a little bit too deep. Not too bad, I can just turn over the whole thing and fix that. And with a bit of belt tension, every surface is touch and yeah, I think this is still usable.
Well, as you can see, I just messed up a bit. <laughs> I had the feet engaged and didn't pay attention to the sled and it hit down here and ripped this part here off. And now everything is basically <laughs> scrapped. Well, it's unfortunate and a little bit fortunate because I wasn't happy with the stiffness of this jig anyways. And now can improve on it. Great. I started with gluing two pieces of plywood together for making a better jig. Both pieces already have a center hole which I can also use for alignment. I then cut it into a rough circle, mounted it to a faceplate and turned it until the pulley had a perfect fit. Since it's wood I could also screw the pulley to the jig with the holes in the pulley. And it seemed to run very true. Next I mounted it with the faceplate in the chuck of the metal lathe. Now it's mounted here and it runs pretty true, but unfortunately not as true as I would like it to. So I now have to do the thing that I wanted to avoid, which is turn wood on the metal lathe. But I've got no choice. I want to avoid that because I don't want to contaminate the oiled surfaces of the lathe with wood dust. But with a shop vac at the cutter and a light pass, I managed to contain all the wood shavings and the dust. And after that it ran very true. Now before I use the pointy tool I think it's important to mention that we kind of figured out why the material got pushed away in the first try. And it probably was the incorrect clearance angle on this tool. It was too small and well that starts to push the material away. So we reground that and now the clearance angles are bigger and should be no problem anymore. And now the tool is also sharper to cut the plastic a little bit easier. This second one went much better and the belt on here fits beautifully. This is now done, but now I have another problem because this was the first print that I've done and this is the second. And the second one fits and on the first one I somehow screwed up the inner diameter and this won't fit over the bearing flange. All this are solid layers. I think I have enough material that I now can remove some on the router table and make the inner diameter bigger and then fit over the bearing flange. The setup is very simple. I just clamp two scrap pieces with a round corner to my router table and the outer diameter will now be guided by those corners. And as I'm pushing into these guides, the router bit will engage and cut. And when I'm not guided, the router bit won't do anything. So it's also pretty safe. Okay, now I raised a bit a little bit, cut again and repeat until I have the full thickness. All right, I also cut a chamfer on there because there's some glue squeeze out. And now it fits around there with quite a bit of play, which I wanted. On the wheel there is no reference for the pulley that makes it easy for me to mount it centered so it runs nice and true. So I have to do that kind of manually, clamp it down, look how it runs and when I'm satisfied with how true it runs, I just screw it down in that position. I very quickly noticed that this method was too difficult and would take too much time. So I gave up on that and made a jig. And with the jig done, let's give that scene another try.
On the wheel there is no reference that will make it easy for me to mount the pulley centered so it runs nice and true. So to do that I made this disc that will assist me. If you look at this gap you can now see that the pulley runs true to the shaft, at least radially for now. And if I screw it like this to the wheel it will then run also true together with the wheel. Secured in place I can locate all the screw hole positions with a brad point drill bit and I let the drill spin in reverse so it won't grab. The failed pulley now is at least a perfect support piece for drilling. Um, <laughs> shit. How do I get this disc out again? Ha! I'll mount the other screws later, but as you can see, it's now mounted and runs perfectly true. But unfortunately, it still wobbles. The dial indicator measures the edge of one of the grooves. And that spot there is really bad. And I want to try to fix that. This spot has now two tenths of a millimeter of shim and also installing all the screws helped. And now I'm within a tolerance of plus minus one tenth. I think that's okay. And now just for fun, let's power it. So now the wheel pulley is done, next comes a new motor mount and then the motor pulley. The old motor mount was screwed to the frame and then to tension the belt I had to move the whole motor back and then bolt it down with these carriage bolts in these wooden slots and reaching all the nuts was just a nightmare and very difficult to do. So that has to change. Since this is a flange mounted motor it has no foot to mount it on the frame. That would be really easy. So now I'm going to make a foot and fortunately this material thickness still fits in between the motor and the frame which means I can use it as a base for the foot. I've made the platform and with the motor sitting on it and against the frame I can roughly measure out where the shaft is. About 10 centimeters from this edge and about 9.8 centimeters from the top edge. I need these measurements to locate the right hole position on this piece where I will mount the flange to. On the flange there's this part here that's a little bit proud of the flange surface and that's there so you can mount the motor and the shaft centered in a hole. I now of course also need a hole in this new mounting piece where this can fit into similar to the old mount where the hole was elongated. That should be some nice value. 110. A perfect job for my homemade router circle jig. A link to that video is in the description. And I've already set it up so the distance between the cutter and the pin is the radius of this flange part plus a little bit of slack. On the piece I drilled the center hole where the pin fits into. And now I'm pretty much ready to go. This diameter is now about four tenths bigger than this here, which is good. And to make the rest fit through, I could remove the rest of the hole or just cut a smaller hole where the rest can fit through. But it turned out that this machine surface is also a bit proud to this one. So the hole needs to be at least, let's say 65 millimeters big. And that's a job for a hole saw. There are three relief holes overlapping with the saw cut allowing the dust to escape and make the holzer work much better. If everything went right this should now perfectly fit on there. And that's the case. Cool. It would have been smart to mark the hole locations before I removed the center. But anyways now I just mark an offset circle. 
and I can find the locations that way. And now I can secure the motor to this piece with four carriage bolts. When it's finished, I'll replace that with a lock nut. I've clamped the motor to the frame and like that I can see where these two pieces will meet and mark their location. Just screw together for now and I made a cutout here so I can still reach the nut with the wrench from here. The mount is far from being done but for now it's enough to go on with making the pulley. And that is basically the same as before, making the 3D model on the computer a bit oversized and then printing it. The blank came out good and I printed this part on here, which allows me to grab it directly with the chuck. First I need to turn the hole to 14.05 millimeters. can check the fit with this shaft because this part here is turned to exactly 14 millimeters. And that looks good. Next I will turn a little bit of this surface here because that will touch the shoulder of the motor shaft. And finally a chamfer for this edge. The rest then is the same as before, turning the outer diameter and cutting the grooves. Okay, this now is also pretty much done. I also rounded over the really sharp edges with a card scraper by just holding it against the spinning pulley. But that now again leaves a burr in the V's and that I can remove with a wire brush. And since this here was a interrupted cut, that also created a burr and that I can remove with a chisel. The cross pin now also is something better than a bolt with the head cut off. And if I now put this on here and mount it, it should run true. And it does. Now I can try putting on the belt. Okay, so it's on now, not properly tensioned yet, but it works and it stays in its track. With the motor mount in its roughly tensioned position, I can now mark where that is. I think three bolts to secure it are enough, one here and two here. And that's because when I pull on the belt, the motor only wants to rotate like so, and one bolt is enough to prevent that and it wants to tilt up and therefore two bolts should secure that. I'll use these kind of bolts for mounting and marked the slot locations and now I'll make the slots to fit these bolts. I made the slots with a bread point drill bit, first the outside holes and then many other holes in between until it's a finished slot. And in one of the slots the bolt head needs to be below the surface. And then use the same bread point drill bit to mark the whole location in the frame. For belt tensioning this carriage needs to be moved back and therefore I'm thinking about a bolt going right through the frame here and pushing against this carriage. The lowest point where I can start the hole is about here. And now I'm just tapping the wood. The tap is not quite long enough, so I finish the threads by just forcing the bolt in. On the carriage I install the screw so the tension bolt can press against metal and not wood.
Well, small problem. I wanted to end the video now because it's already quite long, but I at least wanted to fire up the saw once with the new belt. So I wired it up temporarily and unfortunately turned it on off camera for like half a second because the moment I turned it on, something self-destruct and cracked. Let's have a look. Nothing moves at the moment. The belt is out of its grooves. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that is an indicator on what is wrong. And that is more. <laughs> Ah, shit. Yeah. The problem was that the slot that was printed into this pulley didn't have enough support around it to transfer the torque from the motor. And since the starting torque is so high, that just smashed everything into pieces. So what I need to do now is make a new one of these, and this time from the slot of the middle, Make sure that there's enough solid material to the outside. Right now there was just infill and there needs to be solid material that can transfer that torque. Yeah, I should have done that in the first place. I then decided against another printed poly since it takes almost 9 hours to print and used some solid polyethylene of which I have some scrap pieces. And I go over this really quickly because it's basically the same again as before and I also made this into a whole separate video. Okay, now I'm back here with a new pulley and set up for another test. If you want to see more about making this pulley, I also made a video about that, but I made it a separate video and you can watch it with the link in the video description. But now let's fire the saw up for a test and see how this works. This time the camera is rolling and I won't miss anything. Probably everything is going to be all right this time. Famous last words. Okay, now it's finished and yeah, it didn't really go as planned. It basically was just a constant problem solving it, leading to the next problem and so on. But now it's finished again, working better than before. I think you could still hear some slipping when it started, but it's much better than before. So I could now leave it as is, but I think the variable frequency upgrade is still a very good upgrade. But now it's also time to wrap up this video and I will cover the variable frequency drive and finishing up the rest of the saw in the second part of this upgrade series. So I hope to see you there and also watching the video about making this pulley. And that's it for now. But today I want to fix at least one of these issues and yeah, just listen. The button didn't <laughs> fully engage. Shit! Alright, now I have new bearings in the lower wheel and since the bearings are only 7 euros a piece I just ordered 4 of them which makes it more worth the shipping cost and also replaced them in the top wheel um, and I lost audio. Uh -huh. Next I turn down uh, 
I think you could hear that there still is some very slight slipping, much better than before. But that means that the variable frequency, the variable frequency upgrade. 